Okay, be honest. When you first actually looked at the cleric, were you kind of surprised by what you saw? I mean, we all know that the cleric is the healer class in D&D and like every other fantasy RPG. And I don't know about you, but when I think of a healing class, I think of WoW's priest, Guild Wars' monk, Maple Stories, well, cleric. And what do all three of these classes have in common? They all wear cloth armor, they're all pious representatives of their deities, and they're all kind of huge pussies. So when I first picked up 5th edition, which was my first fantasy tabletop RPG, I pretty much expected Gary Gygax's clerics to follow suit. Except clerics in D&D are absolutely not cloth wearing pious pussies. In case you're out of the loop, in D&D, clerics wear heavy armor, they smash things with hammers, and they're often considered the most OP class in the game. That's a pretty big deviation from what I, and hopefully you, expected out of the OG RPG's healing class. Which then begs the question, how did Gary even think about including a heavy armor wielding, hammer smashing, healing magic using character class when he first wrote Men in Magic in 1974? Well, to find the answer to that, we need to go back in time all the way to 1049 in a small town in the northern French countryside called Bayou. A young little bastard boy named Billy has just made his half-brother, a slightly younger little non-bastard boy named Odo, the local bishop. Billy was just 21 years old and he was in the process of consolidating power in the duchy that he inherited from his father 14 years earlier. Odo was 14 or 19, the exact date of his birth isn't really known, but we'll say he was born in 1035 for the memes. Now, why would a 21-year-old duke take time out of his busy schedule putting down rebellions to make his 14-year-old half-brother a bishop? As far as we knew, Odo didn't really have any significant interest in the church nor ecclesiastical affairs. And bishops are big dogs in the Catholic church. This isn't getting your best friend a waiting job at the restaurant you work at. Well, if you've never played Crusader Kings, you probably wouldn't know that in the Middle Ages, Catholic clerics, not d, d clerics, weren't allowed to inherit or make claims on secular titles. In other words, Billy Boy didn't want Odo Dodo Jones in for his turf. As we would find out later, Odo was what we call an ambitious ass, greedy ass, song bitch. Anyway, now that Bill had taken care of his greedy ass little half-brother, he could resume his previous affairs, stomping out rebellions erupting all throughout his duchy. Remember when I said that Billy was a little bastard boy? Well, turns out nobles don't really like being ruled by little bastard boys. And the rebellious nobles gave Billy the bastard a lot of trouble. So much trouble that it would take Billy boy until 1060 to unite the duchy that was his birthright. But ultimately, stomping out rebels isn't what would put Billy the Bastard, nor his half-brother Odo, in the history books. Are we there yet? We get there when we get there! See, in 1051, Billy, the now 23-year-old little bastard boy, went on holiday a hundred miles to the north. He was visiting his first cousin, twice removed, this guy called Edward. Now, Eddie was really into the whole Christianity thing so much so that he took an oath of celibacy. Now the thing about oaths of celibacy is that you can't have kids. And in the Middle Ages, when you can't have kids and you're a king, people start asking questions like, who's gonna take over this place when you die? So when cousin Bill comes to visit old Eddie, Eddie is stoked because Eddie's been having problems with this dickhead named Godwin who comes from the wealthiest family in the kingdom. <laughs> And old Tedward really doesn't want Godwin to take the throne when he dies. So he promises the throne to Billy the Bastard. Billy the Bastard's stoked. He goes home. He goes back to taking care of rebels. Let's fast forward to 1066. St. Edward dies on January 5th which is my mom's birthday, by the way. And Harold Godwinson, Godwin's son, takes the throne the following day. Now, Bill's pissed because he was promised the throne 14 years earlier. So Bill gathers together his best mates, they put together a nice little army, and they all sail 100 miles north to seize what was promised to Billy Boy 14 years earlier by his celibate cousin. And among those good chaps is sweet little Bishop Odo, who actually gave Billy Boy 100 ships for the crossing. So now, Bill's got a big old fuck off army with 100 big old fuck off ships. He's got his best friends with him, including his half brother Odo, and they set sail on the seas to go invade the kingdom. They land in this little bay and they post up outside this little town and they wait for Harold Godwinson to show up. Two weeks later, the Avengers Endgame of Billy Boy's life would occur. At 9 a.m., 
on the 14th of October, 1066, the Battle of Hastings began. Now, we don't really know what happened on like a minute by minute basis, but what we do know is that William the Conqueror killed Harold Godwinson, threw his body into the sea, and claimed the English throne for himself. And how do we know all this? Through the Bayo Tapestry, which was this giant embroidered cloth that documented everything leading up to and including the invasion of England by William. And the most important scene in this tapestry, at least for this video, is this one right here, where we see the good Bishop Odo of Bayou wearing heavy chainmail armor, wielding a mace, bashing some skulls in. That's right, Gary Gygax's inspiration for what would become a core class of not only Dungeons and Dragons, but fantasy role-playing games in general, came from a shitty embroidery of a morally bankrupt bishop wielding a mace 956 years ago. Now, if you were to give this real life cleric a D&D alignment, he would 100% be lawful evil. Seriously, Odo of Bayou fucking sucked. According to contemporary Anglo-Saxon sources, he was a complete monster who treated all of his subjects like absolute dirt. He would forcibly seize land for himself and his friends, and he even sacked the cathedral at Durham. That's right, a Catholic bishop sacked a Catholic cathedral and killed good Catholics. Not only did he just kill them, he actually mutilated the corpses of the innocent parishioners, and he stole the bishop's staff. Eventually, Willie got sick of his brother's shit and had him arrested in 1082, probably on accounts of him being a terrible person. Honestly, the rest of Odo's life kind of sucked after that. Best brother Billy gave him a deathbed pardon in 1087, which you would think, oh, okay, cool. His life's gonna, you know, turn around now. But then he immediately squandered that by supporting this guy called Robert Curthouse in the War of Succession that happened after William died. Spoiler alert. Robert Curthouse lost. William Rufus exiled Odo to the continent where he just kind of hung out for like 10 years. And then he decided that he would join the first crusade where he would die in Sicily. Of course, none of that really has anything to do with clerics and RPGs. And let's be real, you probably don't give a shit if you're even still here at all. But if you are still here and you are interested in the real life origins of D&D classes and fantasy RPG classes, then you should totally click right here to learn all about the origins of the Bard. Maybe you'll find it interesting and thank you so much for watching.